Hey guys, thanks for joining me. We're going to read some more out of The Invention of Hugo Cabret. We're on chapter seven called The Visit. Soon the children had raised enough money for the old man's medicine, which Isabel bought at the local pharmacy. But it had been a difficult week. Hugo, as he walked through the station, watched the clocks begin to break down. They had, they all had slightly different times. Most terrifying of all, the station inspector had written a note to Hugo's uncle and attached it to the latest paycheck, asking for a face-to-face -face meeting. Hugo didn't know what to do. He just kept praying that he could avoid the station inspector until his questions about the mechanical man had been answered. At last, it was the night before the visit from Mateen and Rene Tabard. Hugo could hardly fall asleep, and when he did, he dreamed about a terrible accident that occurred in the train station 36 years ago, which people still talked about. Hugo had heard stories about the accident from the time he was very young. A train had come into the station too fast. The brakes had failed, and the train slammed through the guardrail, jumped off the tracks, barreled across the floor of the station, rammed through two walls and flew out the window, shattering the glass into a billion pieces. Now, I'm always curious when I read this part, if this actually happened, notice this is not the pencil drawing from Brian Selznick. So it makes me think that maybe this is one of those elements of the book that is true. And like, maybe this is a actual picture of that happening. It'd be fun to research that and learn. I noticed that the building, the writing is in French. So um, maybe if you search like um, early train crash in France or something, you might find if that was true or not. I'd love to know if you find something. In his dream, Hugo was walking by himself outside the train station when he heard a loud crash and looked up. A train was falling on him from the sky. Hugo woke in a sweat. Hungry and afraid to go back to sleep, Hugo climbed out of bed and got dressed. He walked down into the train station and stole a bottle of milk. He was happy to find a tray of fresh croissants that had been left unattended near a delivery door. He took a couple of them and hurried back to his room, where he ate and waited until it was time for the meeting. Okay, notice some time has passed. So now it was raining. And Hugo arrived just as Atine and Monsieur Tabard approached with their two black umbrellas. Monsieur Tabard held some kind of large package under his arm. Isabel called to them from the window and met them downstairs on her crutches. Both men closed their umbrellas and shook off the water before moving inside the doorway. Atine hugged Isabel and she told them to all remove their shoes. Papa George hates having shoes in the house. Monsieur Tabard said, Please tell me again your godfather's full name. Georges Melies, said Isabel. So it's true. He stared at Isabel for a few moments, then caught himself and said, It's very nice to meet you, young lady. I hope this is a good time for, your, for our visit. Yes, said Isabel. I think so. Papa George is feeling a little better. They are expecting us, are they not? asked Monsieur Tabard. Um, please come upstairs. Notice how she dodged the question, right? Isabel asked everyone to wait for a moment in the hallway. Um, in the hallway. Sorry, I lost my spot. Where Monsieur Tabard put down the large package she was carrying. Then, glancing nervously at Hugo, Isabel entered the apartment. The visitors could hear voices, and finally, Isabel returned and brought them inside. Please don't be mad, Mama Jeanne. The old woman had been chopping vegetables um, and she was holding a very large shiny knife when she turned to see the three visitors enter her home. Who are these people, Isabel? The knife glinted in the dull light of the apartment. Atina and Monsieur Tabard took a step backward. Hugo reached inside his wet jacket and took out the book that he had borrowed from the film academy. He handed it to Isabel. We found out who Papa George was, he said to her godmother. Hugo found this book. It told us about the movies. Monsieur Tabard wrote the book and Atina's his student. Mama Jeanne, they want to help. They love Papa George's films. Monsieur Tabard straightened his bow tie and carefully stepped forward. 
I deeply apologize. I thought you were expecting us. We will leave immediately and return upon your request. The old woman, realizing she was banishing a very sharp weapon, hastily put it down and wiped her hands on her apron. Please keep your voices down. My husband is sleeping. I'm sorry. I, I wish my goddaughter had told me about your visit because we could have avoided this uncomfortable situation. I'm afraid I will not be inviting you back. Mama she Anne, please don't make them leave. Madame Meliers, I don't want to impose on you, said Mr. Tabard, but if this is in fact to be the only time we meet, please let me tell you a brief story. I met your husband a long time ago when I was a little boy. My oldest brother was a carpenter whom your husband employed on many of his earliest films. He often brought me with him to the studio where the movies were being made. I remember it like it was just yesterday. I remember how the sun shone through all the glass. I thought it looked like a palace in a fairy story. One afternoon, your husband appeared and shook my hand, and he said something to me that I've never forgotten. Monsieur Tabard paused for a moment, placed a uh, glance toward the closed door, and then continued. He bent down on one knee and whispered to me, if you've ever wondered where your dreams come from when you go to sleep at night, just look around. This is where they're made. So this would be a young Rene Tabard, and this is Georges Méliès on the set of one of his movies. I grew up wanting to make dreams too. Your husband gave me a great gift that day. I hope one day I can repay him. Hugo remembered what his father had said about seeing his first movie as a child. He had said it was like seeing your dreams in the middle of the day. The old woman lifted the bottom edge of her apron and wiped it across her brow. I need to sit down, she said. A team brought, her, brought a chair to her and she sat with a sigh. My husband was an important man and I am pleased that you remember his films with such fondness, but he's become so fragile. It's not a good idea to dredge up the past for him. We brought some of the past with us, said Mr. Tabard, but if you don't think, what did you bring, asked Isabel. The old woman raised her eyebrows. When I was invited to meet the man I thought had died, I must admit I was skeptical. But stirred by my memories of Georges Méliès, I sent a team down to the Film Academy archives. And in the very back, under a pile of old boxes, he found one of your godfather's movies. It's a little dusty, and I, but I think it's in pretty good shape. We brought a projector with us in case he wanted to see it. We figured it might have been a long time since he's seen one of uh, since he's seen one of his films. Hugo and Isabel grabbed each other. Show us, said Hugo. No, no, I don't want to wake up George, said the old woman. Oh, please, let, let's watch it now, please, said Isabel. The old woman looked toward the closed door of the bedroom and touched the brooch on her neck. Her eyes shimmered momentarily with curiosity. At least that's what Hugo thought he saw. She covered her eyes with her hands and as though the light was too bright. And then she shook her head and said, be quick with it. Monsieur Tabard and Atin got the package from the hallway and unpacked the projector. They set it up on the hall, on the table, and took out the film reel. Atin threaded the film through the projector and plugged the machine into the electrical outlet. Hugo closed the curtains. They aimed the projector toward one of the walls and turned it on. It clattered to life and the film began moving through um, it as light burst onto the wall. Images appeared, including Georges Méliès himself as a young man, dressed in a fake white beard and a black cape covered with stars and moons. Hugo recognized the designs. When it had fallen out of the broken box in the armoire, he had thought it was a black he thought the black fabric was a blanket, but now he realized it was a costume from the movie A Trip to the Moon. All right, I am actually going to stop there. I know I'm not quite done with this chapter, but as I look at my clock, I need to join you guys online for a meeting right now. So I will finish this chapter along with the next chapter in our next video. Thanks for listening, guys.